your girl Karina here and happy holy Easter Wednesday! Yay! It's another sunny day. I don't know if it's cold outside, um, but I'm hoping and fingers crossed and praying to God that it's actually warm outside as it looks. But, you know, only those that are working outside, God bless your heart, the fact that you're still working outside during this time. And I think, you know, I think, I think, I think that like there's literally a light to the tunnel, which I always hope and pray and I always think there is because really I just got like an email from my company that like at the like by July by July we will be back to the office so I'm like thank god you know because I love being with people I love you know be like I'm an in-person type so I just can't stand like online stuff so for those that are watching this that are in a relationship, kudos to you because that's legit. Like for I can't do online <laughs> stuff. So really to be honest, I mean like for those that are in a relationship watching this, God bless your hearts and God bless your relationships to be honest with you. And for those that don't know me, my name is Trina. Like I love singing, I love keeping it real for you guys, for God especially. And with that said, you know, I hope and pray that you and your family have been well during this quarantine time. And, you know, let's all really unite our prayers as one to really make this whole thing be all come over so that we will be able to all reunite again for Christ in church with Jesus our Lord and God and the Blessed Mother Mary and the Holy Spirit. So, really, I love, like... You know, I love being in person, so with people and, you know, especially with church because that's the number one thing that I highly miss right now because it's just church for me. I need to be, like, in the church, in the presence of Christ, like, physically. So, with that said, I hope you have your favorite snack and favorite drinks so that you'll be comfortable with me, hanging out with me, for God, yay! And with that said, let's get started. Today I want to talk to you guys about Acts of Thanksgiving for Christ. Yeah, I think a lot of us, we tend to forget to really thank our God sometimes because it's just like, we always tend to pray, 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 you know, like this, but then we don't really like thank God for like, you know, for the things that we take for granted. So I, that's what like, especially when now, you know, the fact that we have a roof over our head, the fact that we have food on our table, you know, just the basic, basic necessities are so, like, forgotten that it becomes like, oh, yeah, another dinner again. What is this? Ew, I don't want to eat that. Like, there's legitimately, like, people in other countries that are at least scrapping for food, right? So, that's what I'm saying. We have to constantly be grateful to God for the basic things in our life, you know? The fact that we have a phone, the fact that we have a laptop, the fact we can do Zoom meetings for Christ, you know? It's just... Some people can't even do that. They have to like, I don't know, use a telephone cup thing. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know what's happening. But you know what I mean though. Like the basic things that we take we tend to take for granted is what I'm trying to get at. And so that's why I chose this topic for today, that, you know, the way of showing our gratitude to God is through acts of thanksgiving. Yay! So at least my first point that, you know, we have to be think thanking God for all his benefits. Literally, if you think about it, it's like the fact that you can talk, the fact you can, you have your two eyes, the fact that you can hear, the fact that you can literally like have that sense of touch. You know, the five senses is what I'm getting at, and the six is your mind, right? And well, that's what I'm saying, like, you know, just for those simple things, we don't really tend to think about in our daily lives. Like, we just tend to wake up, Again, do a morning prayer and then go with about go about with our day. And we don't tend to really think about that too much. Um, but for those that are, God bless you. Kudos to you. Um, but really, I just want to put out there that we all should ultimately be grateful to God for everything through forms of prayer. You know, singing for Christ. You know, like my music covers alone are legitimately my form my most dominant form of prayer that I always love to do because as I've said before when you sing you pray twice 
Save for Christ because you are praying twice. You know? And I know it sounds like a rhyme, but it is. Like, it's so catchy and, you know, it makes you really remember. Like, but really, you don't have to be like a, you know, a pop star singer to really praise God through singing. Like, again, as I said, as long as it comes from here, your heart is all that matters. And essentially, like, that's showing your gratitude to God is like our expression of our faith. Like, just thank God they have another day to live. Thank God they have, you're able to, like, breathe, you know, and live another day for Christ. So really, you know, we, it, it leads to that, you know, way of showing your love and humility to Christ in the eyes of God. Because, you know, when you're thanking God, you're showing your love to God. And through that, you are showing your humility. And it's really beautiful like that. You know, it's really just like, thank you. Yay. Like, don't complain to God and be like, oh, crash and burn. I didn't get what I want today. It's like, calm yourself, jeez. <laughs> so really, again, like even in mass too, like the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, right? Like, you know, we have to be thankful for that because it's a foretaste of our eternal happiness. And God really loves that by, you know, that sacrifice of his son every mass, the Holy Communion, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, those are the little things that we tend to just, like, when you think about. Because normally, I don't know about you guys, but, like, I remember, like, when I was attending mass back in the day, like, you know, my mind was, my, my physical body was there, but my mind was like, <sighs> when's it gonna be over? Like literally, like that's just uh, what was going on in my mind like back when I was like teenager. But like nowadays, I'm like, wow, okay, this is a party celebration for Christ in a very solemn, legit way. And uh, let's get, let's get in the zone, the zone for Christ. <laughs> and really, like we all have to really zone ourselves to Christ once we enter. The church really I'm saying, like it's very important that we really zone in like once we enter the presence of god because really i remember i wish i can tell my teenage self be like Karina, focus focus on christ don't zone out okay but no it's like i love how god just like really worked his way in my life so like dominantly in the last few years and i'm like thank you i need that and yeah <laughs> But going back to what I was saying, like, again, I really want to make a point that, like, once you enter the presence of God and Jesus Christ and Blessed Mother Mary and the Holy Spirit, we have to really zone in, you know, and just declutter, not declutter, but just detach from the world during that time of Mass. I mean, it's only, like, 45 minutes to an hour, so turn off your phone. Don't think about your phone. Don't be tempted to look at your phone and don't be bored, okay? Because it just makes me sad when I see like people texting in church or like their phone rings. I'm like, oi, yay. <laughs> like, I'm just like sitting there like thinking who left their phone on? And clearly it's like said in the very beginning before master. It's like, please kindly turn off your phones, please. Like, it's just that kind like, What's it called? Uh, like a secretary kind of way? It's just put, putting out there to turn off your phone. So, I don't know, people get away with the putting on silent, but then sometimes you forget to put on silent, so then it just rings and you're like, cringe. So, and it completely gets distracting. Cause I remember like, there was a time I was so zoned into the homily and then the, someone's phone rings and it's just like this, oh. Like, the ringtone was just beyond my comprehension <laughs> of the selection, mind you. So that's why I was just like, wow, okay. Like, that's kind of, that's not kind of, but that's not being considerate. Because that's like, that's like telling Christ, yeah, I have the world waiting for me. So, like, what? I don't need to turn on my phone because I know it's not going to ring. Like, really? If you're going to go to church, no. When you, what? no, let me rephrase that. When you go to church, legitimately turn off your phone. Simple as that case closed <laughs> that's it so really that's what i'm trying to say like when it comes to really entering the presence of god it includes everything to really take that time to space yourself 
from the world and to really focus on Christ and Him alone and that's it. And to really deepen your relationship and your faith with God. So it really leads to my second point that, you know, we have to exercise the virtue of gratitude. Woohoo! Yeah, and really with expressing our virtue of gratitude to God, especially it, again, as I said in the very beginning of this video, it shows our love, our faith, and hope in God. Because it has that acknowledgement that we need him, that we ultimately need him in our everyday lives and we cannot live our lives alone. You know what I'm saying? So really it, being grateful to God is like really deepening that bondage with Christ. And essentially, like if you practice that amongst yourselves, like you, you know, you're special someone or your fiance or because I someone just got engaged that's why it kind of just popped my mind um but if you're married you know it it shows that love to the person even though like okay let me give you an example like when it comes to gifts okay like it doesn't have to be a huge gift what matters the most is like the thought it can be like the most smallest thing in the world but it will mean so much to the other person because the fact that it's from someone they love is like beyond, you know, beyond loving, like really. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, really, it doesn't matter like, you know, what the gift is. As long as it comes from the heart is all that matters. And so tying that with God, you know, we have to be thankful to God for everything that he blesses. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be tangible things the non-tangible things that really we tend to take for granted the fact that we have family the fact that we have food on our table the fact that we have a roof over our head the moment god takes away takes one of those or all of those away then you'll realize how much you were really like taking all that for granted so that's what i'm saying just think of everything so really to add on the second point, like when we show our gratitude to others as well around us, it shows that affection inside of us. And again, that humility and that love towards the other person, right? And so that's why like when I see my friends giving gifts to each other, I'm just like, no matter what it is or like how small it is or how big it is, as long as it comes through the heart, that's all that matters end of story and i always like to put it out there for like you know when it comes to the cards that's the one that really means the most should mean the most because that's where you put all your like your thought and your heart out literally that's where you pour out your heart out dear whoever no, no, no. like i love to make my cards very long because that's just like me personally but like i love to put it out there that the card is the most important thing when it comes to a gift because that's where you get to put everything you know, like, right? Because, again, what happened to handwritten cards? What happened to, like, handwritten letters? Like, now it's just typed up, and I'm like, oh. Like, really? Really? I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but, like, I love, I'm kind of, like, the old-fashioned way when it comes to, like, giving gifts, like, handwritten. Like, I want to put it out there that you all should start hand handwriting your cards, and your letters because it's so beautiful that way you can see like the expression of the person through the writing regardless of how chicken scratch it is hopefully it's not chicken scratch but you know what i mean though it's just you can really tell that they're trying that effort of trying is what matters the most right so really like human life is so full of acts of service really because again it's all about helping everyone around us you know if it's really just like simply helping out or again being a warrior for Christ because you're really proclaiming God's word out there it's another act of service for Christ you're singing for Christ it's another act of service for Christ you know so really like you know gratitude is a really it's it's a human sign of like a big-hearted person <laughs> really like when when you hear someone just say thank you like you didn't have to but like thank you so much it just really shows that how grateful the person is for whatever that may that 
a B, right? And it's so beautiful that way, you know. But then again, don't expect to get a thank you. Like when you're going to do something with kindness and boldness and confidence for someone, like do it with no expectations. Like really, because expectations lead to disappointment. So really just do the best you can and that's it. Don't expect anymore. And so again, tying that with Christ too, we always have to do the best that we can for Christ and let God handle the rest. And just, just to put it out there, like always do your best and let God handle the rest, really. I know it has that rhyme scheme again. It's not mine, so I can't take credit for it. But like, really, I love to always remind myself that all the time because it allows me to really, you know, always have that booster of confidence and energy that like, okay, I don't know what the heck the result's gonna be if I do this. No, not this video, but like if I do like something, as long as I know it's for Christ, that's it. You know, really. And um, that's what I'm saying. Like, we really have to tell ourselves to go outside of our comfort zone for Christ, really. We can't be in that comfort zone all the time for Christ. Being like, okay, if I step out of this boat, will I be okay? I'm, I feel comfortable, uncomfortable, you know? No, just no. Like, don't let, again, as I always love to say it in all my videos, don't be, don't let your insecurities get to you. Because I know that's one of the big, bold things that tend to, <clears throat> come back here, let's go back in the comfort zone. It's like, no. That's why nowadays I'm just like, nope, 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 yes, you know, for Christ. <laughs> and again, as long as you can feel deep in your heart that you know it's for Christ, and for God, and you know it's like the right path, just go. Just go. Don't wait. Don't wait any longer and don't be like... <laughs> really? So that's what I'm saying. Just go and then your your confirmation will be what will happen after that. Really. So that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to me talking to my sisters in Christ, I always like to put it out there all the time. I'm no expert in relationships or whatever, but like... You know, it's, when it comes to, like, hearing stories from my girlfriends, well, my sisters in Christ, basically, um, real, I love to put it out there, like, you know, if you feel something's brewing, you know, just give it a shot. Give it a chance. That's all that matters. Just give it a chance. It's all that simply putting it into context. Because, really, you never know what it might lead to, really. So that's why, like, you know, with God, just ask for his help his guidance and his strength and he will lead you the way i know it's so easy to say i know i know but as i said before it's like a slap in my face because it's a reinforcement and a reminder to me to apply that in my life too so don't worry it's not like it's a one-way street here it's a two-way street here <laughs> so really i'm trying the best that i can the best that i can and also should you you know when you really feel this push in your heart to do something just go don't wait and don't think that like when you feel that like god's telling it's a no just still try anyway just still try anyway and then then you'll get your solid yay or nay right that's what i always love to do in my life like when i see an opportunity i arise to that opportunity you know and then and I just surrender all to God's hands from there. And so should you. So at least my third point that we have to be Thanksgiving after Mass and Holy Communion. You know, tying it to Mass as well, as I briefly brought up earlier, like once we receive the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, we have to take that time to be solemn and solitude with God and just tell him thank you. Thank you for you know being with me always thank you for bringing me here tonight thank you for all the gifts you've blessed me with thank you for you know whatever is in going on in your life you know just be thankful you know there i remember there's this like three point method in your prayer that like first you say you thank god then you pray for something and then the third one's like, I'm sorry. You say your sorries to God. Like, I'm sorry I did this, sorry I did that. Um, 
Yeah, I remember I was told that. If there's any priests watching this, please correct me if I'm wrong ever. You know, I, I'm no seminarian. I'm no, like, sister. So, please, <laughs> just putting it there. So, anyway, side note. Yeah, I mean, that's what I remember. But, I mean, I tried doing that. And um, it made me realize that when I thought about that structure, that three structure to thank God, then pray for whatever your needs are, and then your third one should be your like I'm sorry god for this 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 and all that stuff it really made me realize that I just focus on the second one a lot all my needs so I'm just like oopsie <laughs> so really that's why it's like a little bit of the thank you and then like mostly that the I pray for this 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 you know and then third one's like ooh. but then normally I say that for like confession so it really depends on how you take up take on that but uh really again like god really surrounds us with his care and gifts really and he's always there he's always there watching over over us he's always there always planning the way for us planning the way for our salvation it's just all we have to do is just give him that unconditional yes and tell him okay just take me there Okay, let me wait. Let me wait in this time of waiting of patience so that I'll be able to grow in virtue for you. You know, and that's why like nowadays, like when I'm in that time of waiting, I'm just like, okay, like I think, you know, the way I look at it again, as I said before, like I like to look at this whole quarantine as a way that God's really preparing me for something better and so should you like really if you're in that delayed time period right now or your prayer is just not being fully answered right now and you're just in that time of just praying 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 for this 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 or someone depending i don't know what you're in or who's watching this um really just allow you know allow god to let you go through that time of waiting so that in that process you're actually undergoing that time of preparation preparation you know and we don't really tend to think about you know the preparation saying, like we tend to not really think about that time of waiting as like a time of preparation for what we're praying for we tend to be like hey i needed my answers by like two months time clock's ticking you know no like that's doesn't work like that with god it's like we have to honestly condition our minds that when you're in that time of waiting to really think about God's using this time to prepare you for what you're praying for. You know, because normally we tend to just, you know, pray, pray, pray for whatever we want and then we expect answers like... So, really, we tend to really forget about how, like, God feels that we're not officially ready for whatever we're praying for, that vocation especially. And that's why, like... Nowadays, if I'm in that time of waiting, I'm just like, okay, God, you want me to wait? Okay, uh, I'm going to take this time to focus on what you want me to prepare for. Like, just show me, push me into doing something for you to deepen my faith and relationship with you so that whatever I'm praying for, will I'll be ready, like a warrior, full on ready. Because you know, it's so easy to like pray for things but then like once we get it we tend to feel like oh i didn't pray for this but it's so overwhelming you know so in, in different situations when you feel that kind of hesitation you know like when god shows you the answer but then you didn't expect it coming just honestly go through that time of waiting and just allow god to show you the answer in his time in his time because again god has no time it's only his time so really you know god will show you maybe little signs here and there like as you're going through that time of waiting to like let you know that this is like you know this is part of the pathway just i'm just giving you a little hint for now and then i'll give you your, like your big answer when the time is right and I love how God does that because it just makes me so anxious, like, oh, I want to know now. <laughs> but like, you know, typically with God, it's just patience, patience, and patience. <sighs> but either way, though, we have to be attentive to ourselves because we cannot let our thoughts get in the way and we end up like failing to hear him. 
you know so that's why we constantly constantly have to have that condition of being fully attentive all the time so that we will not allow again the enemy to make his grand appearance and be like hello everybody it's like oh who invited you get out 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 <laughs> oh so really that's what i'm saying because the enemy always loves to just like open the door and be like Yee. any opportunity no Yee. no yeah so that's what i'm saying you know for the enemy to like you know feel that the time is right for him for the enemy to make his grand entrance to really push you off track we always have to be ready that's what i'm saying like as i explained before when it comes to being true warriors you have to condition your mind for what's to come with full faithfulness in christ you know, and to not be fearful for what's to come, really. Because, again, as I've said before, you have God, you have Jesus Christ, you have bosom in the rain. So what is there to be afraid of? You have all the, you have all the armory. You have all the weaponry. So what's there to be fearful of? So really, you know, again, don't forget to take that time of quietness to really thank God for everything. Especially when you're in the presence of Christ. Just really thank you for everything, you know, and uh, that will enable you to actually deepen your relationship with Christ and really allow yourself to really think about the things that you tend to take for granted. So just wanted to put it out there and I always try my best for you guys. And as I promise, I always love to put my best content out there so that you guys will be able to be encouraged to be out there as true warriors of Christ. So that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, very much so, and please subscribe to me to the channel right here, and it greatly means so much to me. And with that said, don't be afraid to be true warriors of Christ. Bye!